A few weeks ago, Blackmagic Design sent over their newish micro color panel, and I've had my eye on this thing since it came out earlier this year. All of the panels before this one were a little too big and pretty expensive, and not something that was worth it to me is I'm not a professional colorist. And that's why I wanted to make this video talking about the panel, and answering the question, is this worth it for freelancers, creators, and hobbyists? Depending on the answer, I will decide at the end of this video whether or not I will buy one of these for myself, so that way I can use it in all of my projects. If you want a really deep dive into this panel from other people who understand and color and just do phenomenal work, check out the video link down below by Team 2 Films. Now let's get started. One of the many things that I love about this panel isn't actually the panel itself, but instead this little booklet that's included. This book made it extremely easy to use the panel and for the first couple days I just left it right over on my desk here so that anytime I wanted to learn something new or forgot how to do something, I could open it up find the control and it'll tell you exactly how to do it. This is how you do a product manual or a quick start guide as they call it. When you get the panel, you will also receive a nice Blackmagic Design sticker and a USB C to C cord for charging and direct connection. Let's talk about that real quick. This panel can either work directly plugged in or it can be completely wireless using Bluetooth. Having both of those options available is really nice and it gives you a good idea of how Blackmagic Design intended this to be used. Most of the time, I work with this thing just plugged in right on my desk above my keyboard and mouse so that way I can reach to it, I can do my color correction, and I still have my keyboard and mouse really accessible. Having that on my desk and plugged in also means that I don't have to worry about it running out of battery or making sure it is turned on. But if you do a lot of work remotely or travel a lot, it's extremely easy just to stick this thing into a backpack and connect it to a laptop or iPad using Bluetooth. I'll even use this Bluetooth option at my desk like I have right now, so that way I can move it around without having any cables in the way. Right on the back of the panel, there is a USB-C port as well as a Bluetooth button that allows you to turn it on and connect Bluetooth devices for the first time. And the really nice thing, if this thing does run out of battery, you can just plug it in with any USB-C cable and it's just automatically going to work. The whole panel itself is made out of a nice plastic. Blackmagic Design is pretty good at that. It has nice rubber feet at the bottom so it doesn't slide around your desk and you won't have any issues throwing it into a backpack when you're traveling. Right at the top of the panel, there is a slot that you can put an iPad into. Now, I don't have an iPad so I didn't get to test this out, but this seems to be a really cool workflow, especially when you're traveling or even if you just want to sit on your couch and do your color correction. Then right below that there are 12 different pressable control knobs and each one of these is linked to a specific function on the color page. These make it really easy to precisely change the color and if you push it down it'll actually reset that value back to its default. So really cool feature there. In the middle we have three color wheels or trackballs and these will adjust the lift, gamma, and gain respectively. The outer ring is going to change the overall color values and the middle ball is going to allow you to offset those color values to add a tint to your lift, gamma, and gain. Overall they're really nice to use and it makes it easy to get precise color changes changes. Then around the color wheel we have all of the different buttons that have various functions. Here I want to take a quick moment to point out how well this panel was designed. It works perfectly when using two hands as you can use the color wheels, all of the buttons and knobs at the top are easily within reach. The whole panel is small enough that it easily fits on your desk but it's big enough so that way it doesn't feel super cramped. There's plenty of room to rest your hands on it so that way you're not accidentally hitting buttons or rotating those control knobs. To take that further, all of the buttons have been sorted into their own groups. On the very left you have global controls like copy paste paste, undo, redo, and so on. Above the left color wheel, there's also three buttons to control the stills. In the middle, you have three reset buttons that are linked to the color wheels, and right above that you have some viewer controls. Then over the right color wheel, you have three buttons for adding in nodes, windows, and keyframes. Finally, on the right you have all of the navigation buttons, the top ones for jumping between stuff like stills, keyframes, nodes, and then the bottom ones for playing back and pausing your video. So to sum that up, this panel has an incredible design and you can tell Blackmagic knows exactly what they're doing when it comes to color. I don't want to dive into all of the specific controls on this board, as there's plenty of videos covering how to do that, and if you get the panel, the quick start guide goes over more than I could in this video. Instead, I want to focus how this integrates into an editing workflow, like when you should use it, does it save time, and what are some of the limitations that come with this board. First up, when do you actually use it? And the answer is kind of obvious, when you want to color correct, but more specifically, where does it fit into that workflow? Personally, I like to use clip level color management, and all of this is going to apply to project color management as well. I'll open my first video clip in the color page, and what I want to do is set up my node structure. If you use a power grade, now would be a great time to add that in. At this point, I'm not going to use my color panel for anything. I'm just going to set up a basic node structure with my color space transforms, and I'm not that advanced of a colorist, so I just do something basic. But now what I want to do is go back to the edit page. I want to copy this first clip that has all those changes. I'm going to select all the other clips in my timeline, and then do Alt-V. This will let us 
is paste the attributes and I want to select the color correction and then hit apply. This will make it so all of these other clips have that same node structure with all of the color space transforms already applied. Now I have a baseline to start from and can start correcting each clip on its own. Now starting on this first clip I'm going to pull out my color panel and I'm going to use the navigation buttons to make sure I am on the second node where I make my main changes. Then I'll start playing with the gain, lift, and gamma wheels until I get the levels that I want. And right above that I have all of my control knobs so I can add stuff like a little bit of contrast and even play around with the saturation and highlights. Again, if I add too much with one of these knobs, I can just press it and it sets it back to the default where I can build off from there. Now you might have noticed that there are four color wheels in DaVinci Resolve, but only three on this color panel. That is what this offset button is for. When I press that, that turns green, meaning that is activated. And that's going to take the right color wheel and link this to the offset values. This allows me to offset the entire image rather than just a specific portion of it. This will also change the first two wheels. So the left one is the color temperature and the middle one is going to be the tint. One of my favorite things to do now that I have this panel is adjusting the temperature and tint is these two knobs make it really easy to get the exact value that I want. It's just a little annoying to do with the mouse. If you mess something up with the color wheels, you can always use these reset buttons to set them back to their default values. Sometimes when I'm adjusting the levels, I'll accidentally bump one of these trackballs and add a pretty awful tint to my image. It can be a little annoying to reset that manually and get it perfectly back in the center, so what you can do is use the shift buttons down in the bottom left. If you press shift up and then reset lift, it is only going to reset those color changes and leave the level changes alone. And vice versa, if you hit shift down and then reset one of them, it's only going to reset the level changes and not the color changes. When you have the offset mode on, instead of resetting the lift gamma and gain like these buttons say, it'll reset the offset, the tint, and the color temperature. If there's anything else that I want to do to this image, like a curves adjustment effect or something like that, what I can do is use the panel to add in another node, and then I typically do my changes on this node with my mouse and keyboard. In most cases, I found that the panel is only beneficial for the primaries control. You can use the panel to add in stuff like a window, but I just find it easier to work with a mouse. Now, when you're working with an iPad, that's where those window controls are going to be really helpful. On this new node, I'm going to add in a window using the panel, and then using the shift up key and all of the color wheels, I'm able to actually move this around. So holding down shift up using the color uh, trackball all the way on the right, I can move its actual position. Then using the ring around it, I'm able to change the size. The middle one, I'm able to rotate it and the trackball, I'm able to change the actual aspect of it. And then finally off on the right, I'm able to change the softness using this ring. So especially when you're working with an iPad, this is a really good way to move this around and get a position. But since I have a mouse, I really like just being able to move in there and do it, do it by hand. There also isn't any way to control the curves, color slice and color warper you can use some of the qualifier controls, but again, it's just easier to use a mouse for all of that. If you switch the controls to be the color bars, the log wheels, or even the HDR mode, the panel is going to control whatever is visible on screen. You can toggle log mode by pressing shift up in the offset button. That'll switch it over to the log wheels and pressing it again brings it back to the primary color wheels. But I haven't found a way to switch to the HDR grade using the panel or even switch which one of these color wheels is visible. So again, just pretty much stick to these main color wheels when using the panel. Now looking at my clips, some of these other shots have very similar lighting and are in the same place. So what I'm going to do on my first clip, I'm going to press copy on the panel, then I'm going to advance to those similar shots and press paste. And what that's going to do is copy all of those same adjustments that I made to this new clip, and I will do that for the next one as well. This gives me a base to start off, because now I can go back to that node, and then I can start adjusting these to get the color so that way it matches the first shot. And all of this can be done without using a mouse. It makes the process of color correction really, really fast. Let's take a look at some of the other controls on the panel. The first button up on the top left is auto color, so it makes it so you don't need to use any of the other controls on the panel. Should have started the video with that. Anyways, the offset button is used to reprogram what some of these color wheels do. You have your copy and paste buttons, which we just looked at. Undo, redo, pretty self-explanatory. We have delete, which deletes the currently selected node. Reset, which will reset the grade on that node. Or if you do shift down, it'll reset the entire clip. Bypass will turn off the color grade and any fusion effects, so that way you can preview what your original image looked like. And disable is going to disable whichever node is currently selected. And again, you can navigate between the nodes using the buttons on the right. The user button down here is eventually going to be customizable, so you can set it to do whatever you want. Right now, Blackmagic Design hasn't added a way for us to customize this function or told us when that function would be available. It would be cool if you could set this to maybe switch to the HDR tab and use the shift modes to change which wheels are visible, or program it to add in an effect node without going and finding it in the effects library. Hopefully, this is something they add soon because it would add a lot more functionality and usability to this panel. Finishing off these buttons, loop 
lets you specify if the playback will loop on the current clip or move on to the next one. Shift up and loop lets you toggle any of the viewer overlays. This is really beneficial with a mask so that way you can easily see the effect that it is having. Something that is kind of cool and really beneficial, especially for those that have a small screen or color grading on an iPad, is this viewer button. And all this does is brings the view full screen, but you can still use the panel to color grade. So assuming you don't need your scopes and you know you have the right node selected, you can just move the color wheels around and fine tune your color correction. I never work this way, I always keep it down so I can see my nodes and scopes, but it's always an option if that's something you want to do. Alright, let's talk about some of the things I like and don't like for the micro color panel. I have three things that I really like about this. Speed, finesse, and enjoyment. It is fast to color correct with this panel. Being able to use these wheels and adjust my levels and get them where I want them in just a few seconds is huge. A lot of this comes from the fact that I can move them really fast and move multiple of them at the same time. With the mouse, I can only move one of them at a time and I constantly have to be moving back and forth between the lift, gamma, and gain. Also just having all of these knobs up the top that I can just reach up, move it around, and have that muscle memory so I know where to go is a massive time saver. And that brings me to finesse. You have so much precise control with this panel. When I'm using my mouse, I'm always finding myself going too far with an adjustment and having to dial it back, um, especially with the temperature and tint controls. With the panel switching to that offset mode and adjusting the temperature and tint, I have so much precise control and it makes it really easy to get the exact image that I'm looking for. It also gives me a lot more control over resetting values. Normally, I can reset all of the different color wheels or I can reset the entire primaries window. With this panel, I can individually reset each one of those color wheels, but then I can also individually reset all of the color knobs up at the top. As an example, if I accidentally brought the saturation up and I wanted to bring this back down to 50, I'd either have to manually make sure it's at 50, I'd have to type 50 in, or I'd have to reset the whole thing messing up my grade. With this color panel, if I accidentally add too much saturation or want to get rid of it, I can just tap the button and it is back to 50, no problem. And the last thing is just the enjoyment that I get out of this panel. This is really just a nice added bonus, but I have more fun color grading when I'm using this. Maybe it's just because it's new, but having a physical panel both makes coloring faster and more fun. There's obviously a few more plus sides to this panel, like its small size, portability, and compatibility with the iPad. It also has a really functional design and great battery life. But is there anything I don't like about this panel that would prevent me from buying it or recommending it to other video editors? The short answer is nothing that can't be fixed. The first annoyance that I have is that we can't control this user button yet. It's really weird to me that Blackmagic Design hasn't added this as, from my understanding, there are similar buttons on the larger panels that you can already customize. Hopefully we get that soon. The second thing has to do with the input sizing controls, which I haven't talked about yet. If you press the shift down button on the panel and rotate the color wheels, it lets you zoom in, rotate the image around, change it to aspect, and all of that. The issue is when I have shift down pressed, when I do reset gain, gamma, and lift, it'll actually reset the lift, gamma, and gain. What I want is when I have shift down pressed, it'll reset the input size and controls which these things are currently adjusting. The same thing goes for shift up when I'm adjusting the window size. This should be a pretty easy software change that they could add when they update the panel with a user button customization, so hopefully they do that pretty soon. And that's it! I'm just a basic colorist and this panel does a great job speeding up my workflow while not taking up half of my desk. While I haven't personally used them, I know some of the bigger panels offer more color controls right from the panel, like color curves and stuff like that, but for me, just having this small and cheap panel is totally fine, since I think I'd prefer using a mouse with the other controls anyways. If color correction is a big part of your workflow, then this is something you should definitely consider buying. Not only is it going to speed up your workflow, but it also makes coloring less annoying and more fun. So I will be buying one of these with my own money and using it on probably every project. If there's any questions that I did not answer, let me know in the comments and I'll check that out. Out. Hats off to Blackmagic Design for making another amazing piece of equipment and always pushing the envelope when it comes to video editing. If you want to support me and speed up your workflow in the process, check out my website with templates linked down below. It has all sorts of drag and drop tools that let you create animations and titles just like the ones you've seen throughout this video. I save hours on each project using it. And as a thank you for staying until the end of the video, use code PANEL for 10% off.